Be lovely. But anyway, listen, it's great to be here. Um, it's quite something to be sandwiched between two lords, uh, Lord Jim and Lord Bob. Um, I feel a little bit like uh, Bulldrake in uh, Blackadder, but I think it's um, fair to say that, uh, let's have a look. It's, it's fair to say that my career uh, highlights, I've got a little bit excited with the clicker. So it's fair to say my career highlights have perhaps not been quite as high as Lord Jim and uh, Lord, uh, uh, Lord Robert, who's following on after me. Um, I was part of the launch team at Channel 5 back in 1997, where I was responsible for bringing you the first two minutes of television on the 30th of March. That well-known Spice Girls hit the power of five. Fast forward 10 years to the launch of the BBC iPlayer in uh, 2007, where I was the marketing director and a lovely line making the unmissable unmissable. So those are my, those are my career highs. Perhaps a bigger high in that 10 years between those two momentous media moments is uh, the small bit part role I played in the production of these four education consumers. So Maisie, um, surrounded by three boys, is just finishing her first year at university and the youngest is still in primary school. And I think what's quite interesting, of course, and we all know this, these millennials, how technology has changed their lives. In fact, these guys are called trailing millennials now, according to my learned marketing tra uh, friends. So in their world, um, they live, they're connected, of course, at home, in the classroom, and on the way between the two of those. Textbooks have become uh, Chromebooks. Blackboards have become interactive whiteboards. So things would seem to have changed manifestly, but actually, for the students themselves, whether they're children in higher ed or adult learners, have things really changed? There's still a teacher at the front of the classroom. We sit behind. We are explained things um, and introduced to things. And quite frequently, that's done through, of course, uh, courseware, books. Those books have become uh, e-textbooks. But has the content in those e-textbooks really changed? Is it uh, any more compelling than it was when I was at school wearing a kipper tie back in the 70s? Is it just a little bit gray, a little bit boring, a little bit austere, a little bit Jim Callahan like it was back then? Yet when you look outside the classroom, everything has changed manifestly. The world of these millennials is bright, it's colorful, it's vibrant, it's engaging. It's on demand thanks to Netflix, Amazon Prime, um, and even gaming like Call of Duty. Um, and in fact, you could argue that video is content in their world and, and kind of vice versa. There's no distinction between the two. So as little as uh, four or five years ago, the average amount of uh, digital video consumed at home was about sort of 40 minutes. That's now let forward to two hours every day amongst this particular segment. So they are actually now consuming more video than they are going on social networks, and they are doing that on digital devices rather than on the main TV screen in the home. And you know, even though video has been around for 120 years, is it actually going to sort of reduce? No, Zuckerberg uh, has just recently said back in April, I think we're going to be in a world in a few years from now where the vast majority of the content that people consume online will be video. Cisco have just said that 80% of content online will be video by 2019. So if you like, video has become the lingua franca of today's society. It's not something on the side. It's absolutely front and center. Um, and why is that? Well, uh, Forrester uh, last year said that a minute of video, well-produced video, was worth one point million uh, words, uh, te text, bits, bits of text. Um, and we see that in the classroom. We see the fact that when uh, video is played out, it captivates students. It brings the real world into the classroom. It drives debate. And in fact, a recent report by Kaltura said that 90% uh, of learning was improved uh, through the use of uh, compelling and relevant video content. So why then, when you look at kind of all the courseware, wherever it is in the learning spectrum, why isn't more video being used today? Well, we think at Knowledge Motion that, Knowledge Motion that there are three reasons for this. Um, firstly, discovery. Secondly, copyright. The third, the cost. If I'm uh, a course creator or I'm a teacher and I'm looking for Felix Baumgartner jumping out the Red Bull balloon to illustrate terminal velocity, where do I go to to get that clip? Do I go to Felix Baumgartner? Do I go to CNN? Do I go to Red Bull? I don't know because the video production industry is very fragmented, just in the same way as the education one is. 
So it's a confusing world. The second thing is copyright. Um, is that clip that I'm looking to license cleared for education use? It might be cleared for a $100 million advertising campaign, but can it also be used in a classroom context? And thirdly, should I be paying the same rates in education with the different economics that apply there as those advertisers are and broadcasters are in other sectors? So that was kind of our start point, really, um, for Bow Clips. We call our platform, our video platform, Bow, because that is the tree under which Buddha sat when he became enlightened, when he literally woke up and understood the world. And we think video has, has that same potential in the classroom context. We brought together some of the biggest names um, from video production from around the world. So AP, Getty, uh, the BBC, British Movie Tone, et cetera, et cetera. Some 50,000 hours of short form programming between one and five minutes in duration. That content is algorithmically matched to the curricula and taxonomies of the partners that we work with in different markets around the world. And all of that is sold under license under a common pricing and rights framework that is specifically designed for education. This is a library that has been set up single-mindedly with the education sector in mind. So I'm just gonna play you a short video now to explain that. You'd expect a video, after all. So um, what I'm delighted to announce today, and we're releasing this to the media, is that um, the approach that we're taking is now being taken up and endorsed by the education industry. So um, Ingram Content Group in the States um, have just come on board as a recent investor of ours and will be following on in our next round. They're one of the largest educational players in the world, sort of a brand perhaps not many people know about. And Pearson, we will be supplying the video content for their higher education course creators around the world for the next five years. But actually, the reason I'm here today um, is actually to seek your support. Um, there are literally billions of hours of content that are being produced year in, year out, um, that are brilliantly applicable for the education marketplace. Um, we need to come together to persuade the film and television industry of the social and economic value that there is in education for them, to get them to clear rights for education at the point of commissioning, not as, as an add-on. And the benefits for them are clear. Firstly, they will monetize their back catalog, they'll have new distribution channels for their new assets, and they'll reduce piracy. We've seen an online use of unlicensed content, and we've seen that in Netflix. Um, moving forwards, if we get that right, that huge repository of television content that so beautifully mirrors the world of education will be made available more widely to the education sector through Knowledge Motion and, and Bow Clips. And so we are now starting the process of issuing a clarion call to those big content brands, big and small, around the world to get them to free up, to open the aperture wider um, of their content rights and to make those available to you all in the education sector. So if that's something that kind of chimes with you, then do feel free to use the hashtag rights for education in your tweets today. And, um, you know, please do contact me and, and, and let me know how you'd like to support this movement that we are starting to create. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day.